We are live here. Game one between Thorzane and Kaz for the TSL 3. I'm DJ Wheat. Let's introduce our players and look at their positions as we start off on Shakura's Plateau. We've got Empire Kaz, our Red Terran, in the southwest position. And we've got his opponent, Prey Thorzane, the Blue Terran, in the northeast. And I just want to remind everyone... Uh... Do a real big reminder here, uh, Wheat, about the raffle that we have ongoing. And I'm not doing this because I feel like uh, we need more support or I'm not trying to get the sponsor out there. I'm doing this because there's not a lot of signups. I can't release the numbers, but uh, it's well below less than 1% of people on the stream have signed up for the raffle. And that means you have a legitimate chance to win this all expense paid trip uh, to Korea for two, get out there, get to the GSL, get to meet Taste Kosis. All you have to do is go to teamliquid.net slash raffle and sign up. I will tell you, during TSL 2, only, I believe, 90 people signed up. And those are good odds. So you might as well sign up and get a chance to get a free trip to Korea, get to the StarCraft Mecca. Yeah, don't, don't be silly, because if I could sign up, because I'm a US citizen and I cannot sign up, but if you are outside the U.S. and you are not signing up, then shame on you. I will slap you on the hand personally. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, so uh, head on over teamliquid.net slash raffle. Go to Korea. Um, I guarantee you, dope, you will absolutely love it. So uh, let's get into the game here. Game one. Kaz is going to build his barracks uh, a, a lot further back than his opponent. Uh, Thorzane, you can see that he's got his racks there uh, for Thorzane right there on the front. Uh, SCV going out to scout about halfway through the map there. And a gas down for both players. So uh, really the only difference, Chill, is that we just have this racks a little bit further back um, for Kaz. Yeah, looking at the production tab, almost identically mirrored here. First Marine coming out for both players as Thorzane throws down a depot, as does Kaz. And, and this is what I was expecting. Both players going to open game one fairly safe, fairly standard. Shakur's Plateau has been modified, so it's now a one versus one map uh, with cross positions. We see Thorzane adding on the tech lab, going over to Kaz's base. He's following suit identically. Going to add on that second gas, and Thorzane has not added on the geyser yet. So uh, we're going to get a little bit of divergence here as Thorzane sticks to one gas in the early game. Yep, uh, and uh, both tech labs down. Marauder coming out for Thorzane. For Kaz, we've got a Reaper coming out, and there's that strange shark. It's coming out for Kaz <laughs> right now. I'm, I don't understand it, but he's coming. And uh, we got uh, towers being taken over. Kaz has actually got the bottom tower. Well, uh, we've got Thorzane with the top tower. And uh, that makes a lot of sense. Kaz can uh, see a lot of stuff going to his base from that position. We see that we're going to have the command center going down chill uh, for Thorzane pretty early. And so there's going to be the big change right there with another barracks coming behind it. Yeah, whereas if we look in uh, Kaz's base, he's now swapped out that barracks after getting the first reaper out and i want to take a look to point out or, or take a minute to point out the intricate scouting that's going on we can see both players controlling the towers both players out on the map with scvs and actually a reaper out for cause he's going to jump up and he's going to see this expansion i have to assume once the reaper jumps up there and there's a reaper out for thorzane as well following suit reaper going to jump into the natural thorzane snipe that scv that's just a little bit annoying and then continue the scouting a little bit annoying. I actually have to say that that's a lot of bit annoying. Now, we do have another Reaper and a Marauder and a Marine heading on over to the base of Kaz right now, making their way into the natural. See that there's nothing there, but actually, if he gets up there, he's only got two Marines, Chill. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. The Reaper takes a little bit of damage, and this one Marine's like, no, this isn't good. SCVs are coming out. It's the only thing he's got to stop it. They're immediately chased off that Reaper. He goes off the cliff. He surrounds the Marine, trying to get the damage. It does kill the Marine, but the Marauder able to do a lot of damage. Only a few SCVs and a Mule mining back at the front. And uh, meanwhile, we do have that Reaper over at the Command Center trying to do something to take away his attention. But uh, a nice little attack here by Thorzane. I just want to take a quick look at the income tab. It doesn't look like too much of a Harvester loss for Cause, which is a little surprising, but still Thorzane has his Marauder that he cannot kill. He goes to the back. Oh my god, the depots stop him. But uh, that was such an interesting attack and uh, good response by Kaz. 
Yeah, and despite the the income disparity or, the, or the, excuse me, lack of disparity, the harvesters being very similar with Thorzane only up by three. He's gonna get that expansion up uh, way sooner than Kaz. Kaz has now just started his expansion, so it's gonna be about half a minute behind. Whereas Kaz is uh, trying to make up for that that uh, deficit by making a Banshee and getting Cloak. So Cloak is now at about 75%. First Banshee on the way out. And let's see, what does Thorzane have to prepare for this? He actually has his Engineering Bay out and uh, three Barracks. Stim is on the way, but with that uh, latest patch uh, delaying that Stim research, it's going to take a while. So uh, here we go as we do have uh, the Command Center going down. Now, one thing I did want to mention about that Marauder chill is that he, he scouted quite a bit, actually, in the base of Cause right. 2. So he saw a lot in the back there. It will give him some very valuable information. And uh, will he have moving forward again? Finally, we have that Banshee taking out that Marauder in the middle of the map. Kaz now making his way over. Cloak is finished and ready to rock and roll. What do we have at the front? Do you see that one missile turret? But he could go after the army. Does he have a scan? Yes, he does. Oh, Throws it down. Scan. Does not. Yeah, he misses it completely. But oh my gosh. I think he just flew one tile too much into the missile turret. Loses that Banshee. And uh, does he have a second one out on the map, or is that it? Yes, he does. It's going over the center right now. Yeah, I just want to take a second to talk about this cloak. I mean, I feel like, as you mentioned, the Marauder was in there, saw everything that was going on. Yes, cloak can give you a little bit of map control, but Thorazine has had both his expansion up for a while. Banshee moving in. I, I would have preferred to see cloak canceled in this case and uh, used toward just getting more production facilities out. But he is getting a lot of value out, just as I say that with this one Banshee putting a little bit of harassment in, and it's going to keep Thorazane on his back foot. A lot of damage being done by this by this Banshee, and not even damage, just a lot of attention is forced away from Thorazane, and Thorazane is out in the middle of the map. He's going to feel a little bit isolated. Uh, does he have a scan ready? Yes, he has one scan at his natural and one at his main, so he should be well prepared to continue the attack in the middle of the map. Yeah, Thorzane is moving forward. He will take out the one Marine. Now, I think the key here is uh, going to be the fact that will we see Siege Mode finish here before this attacking army moves forward? It is actually not going to happen. Oh my goodness, great timing though with that Banshee actually intercepting this uh, force from Thorzane and now forcing him all the way back. Uh, I guess he's choosing to run because he had just dropped his mules. He does not have any energy, nothing out there to detect. So it would have done a lot of damage. A second Banshee comes out and uh, it does not have cloak. It goes down, but look at how much those uh, that army has thinned out there. So uh, that was nice. And siege mode is done. So Kaz shouldn't have to worry about his front door too much right now. The supply currently for Kaz, 64, and we've got 73 for Thorzane. Right, so let's take a look at kind of the overall state of the game. We've got three barracks with Kaz, two of them uh, with reactors. He's got a factory with a tech lab add-on. He's also got a tech lab add-on on his starport. So transitioning into that more standard tank marine composition. Hasn't put the reactor on his starport. He may want to do that as we transition into the later mid-game. He's also taking his third base right now, which is going to be at the top left natural expansion. Meanwhile, in Thorzane's main base, he also has three barracks now putting down a second factory, and he has a reactor on his starport, making a command center in his main base, so that's going to take a little bit of time to float over. Uh, now moving out as he's got his first medevacs out, able to heal up that army, just give him a little bit of map control as he moves out in the middle of the map. Now, uh, right now, the uh, SCV count for both these players, Thorzane in a whopping 53. We've got Kaz just behind a little bit, 41. Uh, we have some medevacs moving out. He'll take over the towers once again, revealing the army he's got moving forward. Two tanks at the front of his home base. No gas here at the uh, at the expansion quite yet. Mules going down, and this uh, command center, his third, is about ready to finish. There are quite a few Marines out here, and I do like the fact that he's got his army split up. Just in case a scan does drop down there, he's going to get really limited information. And additionally, since... Oh... Uh, we've got uh, Medivacs. So it looks like they are going to load up for a drop here, possibly in the back. Thorzade's going to send one out. So he's going to split this up and chill. I really like this decision from Thorzade. He's not going to push forward. He, at least he's got some idea what's at the front door. You wouldn't want to tack into that anyway. So uh, splitting up these Medivacs, he's going to send one down the bottom and one through the top. Actually, I completely... Yes, one through the top now. 
Um, so we will have kind of a two-pronged attack. He can attack that third while moving in there to the back. But look at the missile turret in the back of Kaz's base. He's going to need to avoid that. And he is looking like he is going to fly directly into him. Oh, yeah, no. let's keep an eye on Medivac as he's now sitting there waiting for that drop at the top. He's now unloaded, and it looks like Kaz may be aware of this. He's got all his Marines selected. Now moving back into the main base, throwing up Kaz's vision. He does not see the Medivac, so maybe he just has a feeling. Now with the Marines moving in in the top, Thorazine coming in to drop, flying into the missile turret at the bottom. Is he going to be able to fly past? He's at 18 left. Oh my god, he's able to drop. Meanwhile, the drop at the north, he's stimming and running around, trying to get out of there with the medevac. He is successful, continuing the harassment in the main base. All the SCVs has, have run, so now he's targeting down uh, the supply depots. And even if he doesn't do a huge amount of damage with this, and actually he's doing a fair amount of damage, medevac taken out, but the Marines are still in there with the SCVs coming back. Oh my god, gonna be able to take out a tank and then go to work on that, those SCVs, but he has made a lot of space. So now, while this is all going on, he's able to get his third up uncontested. Supply showing 135 for Thorzane, only 108 for Kaz. Kaz's army is sitting in no man's land. I think he's lost control of it a little bit as he tries to reestablish his focus. Yeah, Thorzane is looking really impressive right now with that 30, uh, about a 30 uh, food difference here ahead of his opponent. He got even further ahead on the SCB count now at 69 of 48 and you know give it oh hold on we got another drop from the back here at the third base just outside the range of the planetary fortress we'll take out a few of those scvs he'll load right back up and continue to do some damage now will we have him ferry up to oh my god he is chill he's gonna ferry right into the main base this is gonna be really hard for Kaz to be able to defend against red f takes cg down the bottom hill attack from the low ground and that will actually not work out so hot for him because he will be able to shoot down at the bottom meanwhile he'll go, oh go in wreck the SCV line, take out a lot from the bottom. All the tanks are gone, so I don't know. Thorzane looked like he was going to be able to do a little bit more damage. That was very smart by Kaz just to attack from the bottom. He has taken out all of the add-ons currently. He's killing the reinforcements, but will he be able to take out the tanks that are inevitably going to make their way back up in here? Thorzane is just in a genius position. As Kaz brings his entire army back slowly to take this out, he's now cleaned up his main. Look at the bottom watchtower with this giant Thorzane army just controlling space. Thorzane has the choice. Is he going to redrop it into the main? Is he going to cut off reinforcements and isolate uh, the planetary fortress at the top left? Or is he just going to attack the top left? Meanwhile, while all those decisions are viable, he's also taking the fourth base. And another disparity wow. is that Kaz was forced to take a planetary fortress in his third, whereas Thorzane has an orbital. Meanwhile, in Thorzane's main base, he's now up to five barracks. He's got two factories with add-ons. Kaz also has two factories with add-ons. No add-on on the starport for Kaz. He just hasn't found the time to get it together. And look at this, Kaz is loading up for a counter drop to try to do some damage back at Thorzane. Yeah, and I don't know if it's going to work. He might be able to go over here to the fourth, but you can see missile turrets are down. And you know what? I do love that idea of the orbital command at the third, especially when you are attacking the front. Uh, you know, when you're in the middle and controlling that middle. Uh, and this is the only way that he's going to be able to go through. Oh, my gosh. Both medevacs go down. They'll be able to do some damage here on the ground, but it won't take long for a few units. Actually, it will take quite a while for a few units to make it over there. So these Marines will do a limited amount of damage. They are going to kind of overstim here. Out comes a nice little handful of Marines from Thorzane, and he'll be able to uh, take care of that no problem at all. He knows that fourth is up, and now this has got to be a very desperate moment for Kaz. He does have quite a few siege tanks right here. In fact, uh, he is uh, he's actually ahead of Thorzane in siege tanks, but the Marine count for Thorzane is just absolutely, uh, it's it's very, very nice. Not to mention the fact he's got all these medevacs for support. More Marines coming over. The third and fourth going to be looking very good. Now, Kaz scrambling to get his fourth up as well. The third has been going pretty good, but as you mentioned, with a the planetary there, not getting that additional mule go 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 and uh, he's gonna load up for another attack here chill medevacs on the way let's go ahead and give an update on the upgrades as well Thorzane got that engineering bay up very quickly so he's sitting at one one upgrades just now completed the armory plus one weapons halfway completed he's also researching plus two infantry weapons meanwhile Kaz has completed a second engineering bay he's got plus one armor on the way Oh my god, chill. The medevacs just flew over Kaz's army. It looks like Kaz is going to attack through the back. And the reinforcements are all in the middle. This might be a base trade situation right here. As we're going to have the tanks sieging up. Oh my god, we've got... Uh 
plus one uh, vehicle weapons being upgraded. That'll probably get taken down as the armory goes down. And yes, we are going to see Thorzane have to go ahead and force, just muscle his way into Kaz's base. SCVs are going to be pulled. We're going to see the siege tank sieging up from the back line. Does not want to lose these Marines, however, and he will be able to do some serious damage once he gets in here. This is insane to me. Actually, Kaz is continuing to siege in the main base, dropping in. He's got a few spotter Marines, but Thorzane is completely in the main base, trying to take out these siege tanks. One siege tank for Kaz does siege up and go to work on the on the Marines in his main base. Supplies favoring Thorzane by 40, as Kaz has a lot of tanks. He breaks down the back rocks, and now trying to move into the main base of Thorzane. Thorzane still has a large contain outside of Kaz's main. I feel like this situation is favoring Thorzane, but it's not over yet. Kaz sieging into the main base with these siege tanks, taking out a lot of Marines. Thorzane has now stopped the attack in Kaz's main base, turning his sights over to the third base of Empire Kaz. Yeah, um, you know, the more that I look at this cause right now, fighting into the reinforcements of Thorzane. Thorzane pretty much out on the map to the point where he can just do whatever he wants. He's going to go ahead and take a siege position here at the Planetary Fortress of the Third for cause. And that, oh my gosh, look at how devastating that is. As it will go down, we're going to have some attacks from the back. Marines are going to be shuttled in right on top of these tanks. And uh, the Marines will go ahead and dispatch those. But a few siege tanks will go. Oh my god, he didn't get the planetary. It's being repaired. And that is not good for Thorzane. However, we did have Kaz retreat out of there knowing that he couldn't attack into it. So I feel like Thor or, uh, Thorzane really, really handled that quite well. Deciding to attack, not pulling everything and doing some damage in the process. That uh, retreat by Kaz is very impressive. Despite, it, you know, it looks like he's going to get broken here and he's in a very, very terrible position. Uh, that Being able to have that foresight of mind to unseage, pull all your units back to defend your third base, that's something difficult that not a lot of top players would have done, but we can see he's now opened the, fl opened the floodgates as Thorazine is flooding into the fourth big of uh, Kaz, stimming, gonna go to work on this Oracle, the Oracle lifts off and tries to get out of there, and Thorazine is just a beast right now, he's reinforcing to the south watchtower, there are so many blue dots on the minimap funneling out as he continues to punish Kaz, Pushing into the third base, Kaz sieges up, he's going to be able to defend that, but the reinforcements with Thorzane in the middle of the map, that's what scares me the most. Yeah, and you know what? Look, this little group of uh, reinforcements for Thorzane is going to meet up with a couple of tanks and a few Marines. They'll stim up and easily be able to take these guys. In fact, yeah, there's the stim. Quickly wow. take that out of GG from Empire Kaz as he just uh, knows that at that point there is too much. He lost his fourth chill uh, thanks to the road that he opened and you know that's that's the risk that you take on Shakuras and it's especially risky in a TVT like that. Um, I think if Kaz would have gotten further into Thorzane's base with not so many reinforcements maybe that would have done more damage but ultimately Thorzane just with some very immaculate decision making in that matchup. I want to talk about just a few points of the game that are, are really interesting to me. That first attack with like an SCV, a Reaper, a Marauder, and a Marine by Thorzane. That's a really dangerous attack to me. I don't think he expected to do too much damage with that. Just wanted to poke in and then he saw, okay, there's only two Marines. What's going on here? And was able to do a little bit of damage. Just put Kaz on his back foot. And then Kaz getting that... Uh, Getting that Banshee out with Cloak gave him map control to get back in the game. There was a situation where um, the supplies had a big, big disparity between them. Thorzane was sitting at about 150 and Kaz was sitting down at 120. But when uh, Thorzane lost those two medevacs at the north side of, uh, of the map and Kaz was pushing, somehow Kaz was able to bring it back to 170 versus 170. So I don't know what kind of macro tricks he pulled off at that time, but... Just amazing to me that he was able to bring it back to that after being down so much in uh, in the mid game. And we're getting a note here on uh, from Hotbit saying that Kaz always opens up Reaper, so that's why uh, that timing attack worked for Thorzing, that early timing to punish the Reaper first. Yeah, I I I have to agree with you. He definitely wasn't expecting it. He handled it appropriately, but already being behind, it just put him a little bit more behind. At that point, even with the Banshees, it was like, well, I can control the middle. And controlling the middle on Shakuras is so important, especially in a TVT. You saw the type of access that gave to Thorzane as far as a dropping uh, perspective, being able to drop the top and the bottom. Um, he was safe to be able to take his third and make his third whatever that he could have left it a command center 
and still have been okay. Uh, but uh, that was big. And then, of course, he was ready on the side. If you go back and, and, and watch that VOD again, you'll see that uh, he's got all the missile turrets surrounding his fourth. So right. just some, again, the great decisions being made there. Maybe a little surprise, but you've got it, it. Maybe you do an attack. You don't expect it to do as much as it does. But hell, when it does happen, you better be ready to like jump ahead in the game. And that's exactly what he did. He just kind of held on to it. So our next map is going to be GSL Crossfire SE. And uh, any any thoughts, any comments, Chill, before we jump into game number two? Well, you know, we there's there's some maps, uh, especially against Karen, you always look at what points are good for sieging up uh, in all matchups. But particularly in TBT on this map, there's a lot of uh, positions on the map, especially around the natural area, where siege tanks just dominate. They reign supreme. So this isn't the kind of map where you can lose center map control and then just sit back on your economy and then push out later. If you lose that high ridge to siege tanks, you're going to lose your natural. It's exceedingly difficult to defend that. So I expect to see a lot of very aggressive two-base play here to try to get map control. Map control is supreme on this on this map. Yeah, you know, I would also say that, of course, you could argue, well, the Zilnaga uh, towers are really important, but especially in a TVT, uh, the towers can help out even that much more, being able to get that vision without the medevacs early on, and so it just becomes that much more important. And as you mentioned, if you could take your your forward, your enemy's forward tower and then get that siege up there, it's, it's nearly a game over situation. Uh, but we've seen a lot of uh, TVTs go all over the place with this. We've also seen the sort of uh, miracle or a merry go round that we we get with the uh, you know with that third being over in the back, and then of course you've got to be able to defend that as well, um, and it's pretty far away from uh, you know your main. So really excited as uh, GSL Crossfire SE will be the next map. So chill, ready? Game number two, huh? Huh? I'm huh. ready. All right, well, let's do it. When we come back, it is time to continue the PokerStrategy.com TSL 3 semifinals day one Empire Cause versus Praetorzane game number two coming up next.